the honourable member for Tangney. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. This legislation applies to the OECD destination principle. Recommending consumption should be taxed in the destination country of the imported digital products or services. This measure is estimated to have a gain, be a gain to the GST revenue of $350 million over the forward estimates. Simultaneously, the GST system is often not well adapted to the circumstances of foreign suppliers regarding their dealings with Australian-based businesses. Therefore, in many cases, supplies between such entities result in little or no GST being payable. This results in the current GST settings, which impose unnecessary obligations and compliance costs on foreign suppliers. Schedule 2 of this bill amends the GST Act to better target the way Australia's GST rules apply to cross-border suppliers that involve non-resident entities. It seeks to avoid non-residents from being drawn into the Australian GST system unnecessarily, all the while maintaining the integrity of the GST base. Measure 2 is all about reducing inefficiencies and removing red tape to revitalise our tax system so that businesses can just get on with creating jobs and growth. By limiting when GST will apply to supplies involving non-resident businesses accomplish this intent. Small and local businesses are important and integral to our economy. These changes mean that certain suppliers are no longer connected with indirect tax zone ITZ or, and or are GST free. Unlike the changes in Schedule 1 that bring into the tax base current supplies that are not taxed, this measure does not alter the GST tax base. Rather, the amendments uh, relieve non-resident suppliers of the obligation to account for GST on certain supplies. The measure came from the Board of Taxation's review of the application of GST to cross-border transactions. They recognised that too many non-residents were being drawn into the GST system on business-to-business -business transactions where it would make no difference. This places unnecessary compliance costs on non-residents, leading to embedded taxation for Australian businesses. This measure improves the balance between ensuring Australia's GST system does not necessarily draw on in non-residents and maintaining the uh, GST base by updating the test for when the, the, an enterprise is carried on in the ITZ so that it is better aligned with key GST concepts and relieving non-resident suppliers of the obligation to account for GST on certain supplies. This is achieved by shifting the responsibility for identifying and paying GST uh, liability to the recipient where the recipient is registered for GST and carries on an enterprise in the ITZ, switching off the GST liability for certain supplies between non-residents extending the GST-free rules to certain supplies made to non-residents and removing the GST registration requirement for non-residents that only make GST-free supplies through an enterprise carried on outside the HTZ, uh, ITZ. The amendments reduce compliance costs for GST-registered importers in calculating the value of taxable importations, simplify administration of the Australian Tax Office. This allows them to focus on their principal job, which is ensuring compliance from those who should be remitting revenue to the Commonwealth. Together, these two measures ensure that only those overseas businesses that should be in our GST system are. And at the time, removing businesses that shouldn't be caught in the system. These GST measures evidently show our government's commitment to improving our tax system, making it more growth-friendly and adapting to changing times. In my electorate of Tangney, over 90 per cent of businesses are small and local. My job as an elected member is to ensure that small and local businesses in my electorate are looked after. The changes put forward in this bill ensure that local business in my area are given a fair go. It allows small and local businesses in Tangney to compete on the same playing field as all cross-border companies. It is our job as the government to provide equal opportunity for all business, whether it is online or on the street corner. As John F. Kennedy so eloquently said, all of us who do not have equal, ta all of us do not have equal talent, but all of us should have an equal opportunity to develop.
those talents. Measures one and two of this bill guarantee that any business in my electorate, in Australia and online, are given equal opportunity to develop and grow their business. Schedule three of this bill, although unrelated to the other two matters, is just as important. It takes important steps to provide to improve Australia's taxation laws for primary producers. The changes reform the income tax treatment of the farm management deposits by increasing their flexibility. This is an important and uh, vital task management tool for primary producers. It will age and assist producers, giving them the ability to become more self-sufficient. The changes were announced in the Agriculture Competitiveness White Paper in 2015 and are the results of extensive stakeholder feedback and consultation. FMDs will help Australian primary producers deal with uneven income between years. This frequently has occurs as a result of weather variation, seasonal changes and natural disasters. Events like this are impossible to predict or plan for, in turn making it difficult to prepare financially. The FMDs is an excellent example of how a tax system can be designed to fit the purpose and the needs of the taxpayer whom it should ultimately serve. Primary producers are important and integral part of the Australian economy. They need to be safeguarded. Farm management deposits assist primary producers manage their financial risk by allowing them to set aside pre-tax income from primary production in a special account which can be drawn from in later years. Current restrictions placed on FMDs impair their effectiveness. However, this government is committed to continuously improving our tax system. These amendments double the maximum amount that can be held in FMDs by primary producers from $400,000 to $800,000. This change gives primary producers better flexibility to manage greater income instability with the funds they have set aside when a downturn occurs. Schedule 3 also allows primary producers who experience severe drought conditions to withdraw an amount held in the FMD within 12 months of a deposit. Previously, a declaration of exceptional circumstances would also allow for early access. However, this provision was removed when the farm household allowance was uh, introduced, replacing a number of ad hoc forms of income support for primary producers. Now, primary producers will be able to determine their eligibility by referring to rainfall data on the uh, Australian Bureau of Agriculture and Resource Economics websites at the same time uh, of withdrawal rather than waiting on ministerial decision. We, the government, are determined to improve the tax system for the agricultural sector. We want to strengthen our approach to drought and risk management in order to facilitate more effective risk management by primary producers. Agriculture is an important and vital part of the Australian economy. It is crucial that our tax system acknowledges this and gives primary producers a system that works for them. In summary, both the GST amendments and the farm management deposit amendments respond to our changing economy and contemporary business needs. The first GST measure that, uh, make sure that overseas businesses pay GST on sales to Australian consumers. The second reduces red tape by removing non-resident businesses from the GST system, which should not be brought in. Changes to the farm management deposits also reduces red tape, this time for primary producers and cre creating greater flexibility to manage their FMDs. Our world is continually growing and changing. Technology has drastically changed the way our world communicates and operates. Ronald Reagan uh, aptly said, there are no great limits to growth because there are no limits to human intelligence, imagination and wonder. Our economy is growing and changing too. We need a tax system which reflects these real and tangible changes, a system which prepares today for the changes and problems of tomorrow. Our tax system must recognise and acknowledge that there is no great limit.